This is a HeadGum Podcast. Rachel's emotional right now. Yo. (laughs) I just realized that it's really a bad idea (laughs) to watch the series finale of Gilmore Girls when you are PMSing. Not a good combination. (laughs) Don't do it. Also, when you've had a horrible stomach situation for three days straight and you're delirious, honestly, from the shitting. You're oh my just, God. At you're this in point, a weird mental space. Mercury's doing its thing, you know. There's a lot. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck is going on. And now I'm like, it's not even lactose. I thought it was lactose, but really I think it was actual just food poisoning. Yeah, we got food from a new place that we never got from before. Yeah. And it started right after and that. And I, I should have fucking gotten vegetarian like I always do. And I I didn't. I was like, I was feeling frisky. I got some stupid ass quesadilla and I'm so regretful. I feel like I'm really turned off from Mexican food right now, which is sad. Very sad. But this is coffee with Rachel, but actually it's more like stomach cramps with Rachel. (laughs) I'm Chris. I'm Rachel. And yeah, so things have just been going on. You've got the stomach shit. There's mercury doing its thing. You know, there's, we missed the last episode because, you know, yeah. Things are just happening. We don't really feel like talking about anything again, but we're trying not to make this podcast space like a like a whiny negative zone yeah, where we just no. discuss our problems. Definitely so we're not. But you know, just shit's hitting the fan. And like honestly it's not just us, like all of our friends are like, having we're the actually same gonna shit. be like hanging out with a couple of our friends, just like talk about like what the fuck's going on right now. Like, yeah, like a vent session because mm-hmm. we need one, honestly. But, but I have green juice today because I'm just staying away from coffee because that's like a not a laxative, but it's a stimulant. Yeah, it really helps to get things going if you're blocked up. But, but guess in this what? Moment. She's <laughs> don't need help. She's good. I won't say the D word because let's be real. That's like the worst word that ever existed. <laughs> Fuck anyone that's upset with the word moist because I'm, I'm sorry if I just offended you, but the D word is the so D much word, more. I'm just over. I just don't really like her at all. Well, typical Chris fashion. I've got a pumpkin spice latte with me because. <laughs> It, it's the time. I can't. You can't stop me. I know. We I need <laughs> to start buying some pumpkin spice products so that we can do like another drunk review on my channel. Mm-hmm. And honestly, all of you guys just tweeting me different pumpkin spice related things. You know, it really toasts my beans at this time of year. Toast your seeds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, we should make some toasted pumpkin seeds. Oh my god! Yeah. Right now we're actually making a. Uh, what do you want to call it? Sort of like like vegan chowder. Yeah, it's just like potatoes and corn and jalapeno and it's in the crock pot that we haven't used in months right now. (laughs) Yeah, we just wanted something like warm and comforting because it's already getting nice and cold here. It's basically fall. Seattle is just like, okay, light switch, here we go, it's fall now. (laughs) Yeah, I'm so excited for buying fall clothing and just all of our walks being wonderfully brisk. You know, yeah. I mean, I really enjoy when I'm going to work when it's cold instead of really warm. Duh, it's very nice. I know. I can't wait. All the food. I've been. I'm gonna eat so many sweet potatoes. <laughs> Do you honestly like? I feel like just during the fall season, I just have cravings all the time for root vegetables. Duh. I want to have some like butternut squash shoved up my ass <laughs> each and every day. I'll take a couple carrots there. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Anyway. Carrots, potatoes are all great. Like, I, last night, I searched the word sweet potato on BuzzFeed. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> Fucking don't do it. If you're a sweet potato binge. Let's because, just say we had to get a muffin tin for one of the recipes you yeah, saw. Yeah, <laughs> I'm making, like, sweet potato stackers. I'm going to use my fucking mandolin. Like, I'm so excited about fall. It gets me so excited to cook. Mm. I make, like, you know, we do Thanksgiving, which this year... It's, it's all about the sides. I'm excited because it's looking like we're going to have actually more than me and Chris at our Thanksgiving table, so... And, and I mean, Lila's there to scream at the oven when the turkey's baking, but you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. She's <laughs> going to be so vocal. I love it. I still am on the fence about whether or not I even want to do a turkey or if I want to just do, like, not a full turkey, just to, like, I don't know. I feel like we'll end up getting the full turkey anyway, but, you know, we'll see how it is. I'm in it for the sides, Mm -hmm. you know. That's me all the way. My goal is to do at least one vegan side, you know what I mean? 
Well, can... shit, what's her face is vegan, so we're going to have to do that anyway, you know. I'm oh, sure she's yeah. going to bring some food too, but I would like to like I'm going to do like my normal stuffing, my normal mashed potatoes and my normal uh Brussels sprouts, but I want to make like a either a vegan dessert for Thanksgiving or like a vegan side. Mm-hmm. So if you guys have any recipes, hit me up. Yeah, definitely some sort of There's side definitely really a million good. vegan desserts though with like pumpkin, sweet potato and all oh, kinds of yeah, shit. Oh, yeah, I'm sure there is. So I'm sure I can make something cool. Uh, well, I didn't do a coffee fact yet. Oh. Well, Green juice fact? <laughs> uh, this fact is you can overdose on coffee, but it would take you to drink 100 cups of coffee for it to be lethal. Whoa. So, I mean, I feel like... If Who's dr- done it? If you drink 100 cups of anything, I feel like it's going to be lethal. Like, you know... What if it was just 100 cups of water? Then, I mean, you would drown yourself. Really? How much water do you have to drink to drown? I don't know. You ever hear of that radio yeah. competition with the drinking and they drowned? No. The There was a radio competition or something like that where it was like to try and drink a couple gallons of water as fast as you <gasps> can or something like that. And somebody drowned doing that. Whoa. Yeah. That's fucked up and dark. It is really dark. Hope they won a free funeral. Like, <laughs> sponsored <laughs> oh by the God. fucking radio. It's like, so fucked up. They killed them. <laughs> oh, shit. What about the people doing like the gallon? What was it? The gallon of milk or a gallon of pass? <laughs> oh, my God. Challenge. <laughs> like, yeah, no, that was definitely. A also, fuck anyone that did that. It's fucking disgusting. That's a terrible. That's so terrible. gross. Thing to do. Like, remember when it was like normal to have like a cup of like milk for fucking dinner? Not yeah. for dinner, but like with your <laughs> dinner? And you'd be eating something and then drinking. Ugh. And my sister was so gross. She liked it when the milk was like, it got a little warm sitting on the table. Like, what? she wouldn't drink it straight poured. She would wait like 10, 15 minutes. That's gross. I would Everything only drink about it. milk like if it was like. Like really chocolate milk, cold. okay, yeah, because we're disguising it. See, we're putting it a mask on. Yeah, the that's honestly, thing. I used to just drink chocolate milk. Though milk I did trash. drink heavy cream. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> we knew that at uh yeah the stupid diners. creamers. <laughs> <laughs> but that's different. It's like sweet and I don't it's know. different. I promise. I don't think I would do that now as a twenty-four year old. You know who's watched cow Oh my god, <laughs> she won't. <laughs> Oh, shit. Speaking of watching things, we started Stranger, Stranger things. things, and we finished Gilmore, but I uh, mean, Stranger Things, we watched one episode, and then we immediately watched two more, because yeah. it was that fucking good. And I can't wait for this podcast to be done, so that I can watch more. No offense, guys. I just want to, like, keep it's watching. So I'm so into good. it. I'm I knew so it was going to be good. Yeah. You know, like, there's things that are hyped, and then there's things that, like are hyped for good reason. I feel what you're saying. And that one, I just felt it. I was like, okay, I think people are not hyping this and I'm not going to like, and it was nice because I kind of went in with a positive, like, I'm going to like this vibe, mm-hmm. but it wasn't, and it wasn't let down. Yeah. You know? Cause that's the worst when you're like, Oh, this is going to be great. And I love it not. when there's shows, there's some shows that start off kind of eh, but then they get really good. And then there's shows that are just like they good from the get go. Like Breaking Bad was just good from the very beginning. Gilmore. <laughs> Gilmore was good from the very beginning. Mad Men. Mad Men was good from the very beginning. Even though they had like this. extra musicness that was weird. Yeah. You yeah. know? But, ugh. I want to rewatch Mad Men again. I'm so annoying. <laughs> you showed me like a picture set or something like that the other day. <sighs> it just gets me in the mood every time. Every time I see like, just anytime Every time I you see, see John Hamm, you just yeah, want to watch it. <laughs> I know. It's a problem. Oh, shit. But yeah, we already finished Gilmore Girls again because <laughs> I just watch that periodically and I'm fucking it's just, ready for that revival. It's just like on in the background, you know, and like... It's not even though. Like, I pay attention. I pay attention. I can like, do other you know, things when I'm watching, but like, I always am like present. You're aware of what's going on. I think the one that I... Because like, we like to watch something more serious or like, at least hard to binge, even though Stranger Things isn't like too creepy for me to like, watch all the we way. We thought it would be, but it's not. And we're also like, watching Mr. Robot when it's on. That we're, takes a lot out of me. To it, so. so on the side, I'm thinking about going through Parenthood again because I've only ever seen that whole show through once, and it'll give me Lauren Graham back, and it's just fucking family drama. It. Like I, it's like the Fosters. I didn't watch Fosters with you when it when you first started, but yeah, you came in like later, and now I got, watch it every week. But yeah. then, uh, oh yeah, that ended. I was like, oh my god, did we miss any episode of that? But that no. was over. But yeah, but all Parenthood of our good ended. shows are coming back. 
I mean, I love the Fosters, though, so it's not like it's gone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Grey's Anatomy and Scandal are coming back in September, and then The Walking Dead. And it's like October, right? October, and same with The Vampire Diaries. When the fuck does The Affair come the back? The Affair doesn't come back until, like, November, which is really What? Oh, uh, uh, and that's when the revival is for Gilmore. I'm <sighs> so excited. November is going to be fucking lit. Like, there's so much happening in November. If something happens in November to ruin all of the amazing things that we have planned, and honestly, fuck. Yeah, Because right. <laughs> I just feel like that would happen. So let's well, just all pray that November's a good month. I don't care. You can take Halloween from me, bitch. I don't let's care. check the, uh, the old retrograde calendar. <laughs> I know. I'm a little scared. But I know it ends at the end of the month. Yeah, at the end of this month. And it's good because I have my hair appointment now in, like, October. So yeah, it all worked out great, you know? You know, I just have, you know... I have an important job opportunity. I have an important job interview coming up this week, and, you know, I couldn't decide when that was happening, but, you know, let's just hope that Mercury does not fuck with that one. I don't know. I feel like Amazon bought Mercury, (laughs) and so maybe it just won't affect you. Yeah, you know, I feel like that's definitely true. So, speaking of buying things... I got the newer iPhone. <laughs> oh my god. We haven't talked about the new iPhones yet. Or any of the Apple stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. We were waiting. You've had an upgrade that's been ready for like a month now. But like, instead of getting a 6, we were like, this time around, for the first time in our lives, we're going to be on the most current model of the phone. We're going to do it. And so I'm we so glad. fucking did it. And you and like I went in, phone. I went in thinking I was gonna get a gold one because I have a gold phone now, and I have also and my iPad, and it's pretty, yeah. And I hadn't seen any of the photos of the other colors yet, or the, like any of the launch stuff because I didn't get to watch the press conference this yeah. time. Um, and so what we did was we like watched the press conference later on and wow, I'm glad I did. Cause I learned a lot. Cause this time around I was like, is it really that exciting? There doesn't seem to be that much that they added, but they did. I know the, a lot the thing of it. Is the, the camera is yeah. like, and that's honestly the most important part for you is less like, you know, for the Snapchat, camera is literally photos. the reason why my phone right now is so like everybody that has a six or a six S their Instagram is just more amazing. Their Snapchat is more clear. Like it's periscope everything and it's just so frustrating having every image i have be so blurry especially when like i have to submit it to a brand yeah. and they're like that's just like not clear enough and i'm like i don't want to fucking take out my dslr for this like because yeah. i don't have like the dslr that like sends you the photo directly to your shit you doesn't have to like plug it Wi-Fi in wi-fi or anything yeah fuck that um but anyway so i was really mostly excited to just update my camera because i use this phone like a camera basically yeah and then we saw the new colors yeah well, and new i color i like had a mental breakdown like, <laughs> I was, like i thought i was going for gold and now i want this shiny fucking black orb like because it <laughs> looks like so nice it looks like a goddamn monolith like yeah it looks so like a piece sleek. of obsidian you know? yeah and like the the front glass like basically like evaporates into the shiny back it, it just looks like it's all one solid unit and it it's looks cool. so pretty and so like, i was like fuck it i'm doing it <laughs> and i was like you know i didn't want to have the same color phone again because I have a gold iPhone as well right now. But then I saw that and I was like, you know what? When the time comes, I'm going to have to get that too because it just looks so damn pretty. The and I want any other ones. is very pretty. But I knew Miss BB Cream Hands. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to have NARS that packaging. looking like a NARS package. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. All of my NARS packaging looks so disgusting. Honestly, can you tell them to like change it? I don't know who I'm saying. (laughs) If you work for NARS, fucking tell them to like chill, (laughs) add like a makeup resistance layer. That's invisible. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I'm very excited. And when I was ordering it, so I guess apparently I have a grandfathered contract with Verizon, which I just fucked up. Yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. She done, but it it had one last grandfathering to give me a grandkid or whatever. (laughs) But like, I love it because, like, you hear about all these people that have grandfathered contracts and they're like, I have unlimited data. And you're like, whoa, that's crazy. crazy. So I never thought I had a perk like that. But apparently I was eligible for one more upgrade. So I didn't have to pay fucking like $700 yeah. for this new phone. You know how they used to do like the reduced price instead of you having to just like pay the full price of the phone or do a yeah. payment plan? Yeah, and the contract. Or yeah, whatever. so you still had one left and so you still got a reduced price on the phone and that... It's just amazing. I know. So seeing that, I was bracing myself to spend like six fifty or whatever for the seven. I didn't get the seven S by the way. I just wanted a smaller device. Yeah. Um 
and I was bracing myself to spend a lot more money than I ended up spending. It was only two ninety nine, And so I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I might as well get, like, more storage. Because right now I have a 16 gig phone. 16 yeah. gigabyte. Yeah, and so, I mean, the minimum now is 32. And that's what we thought going in. That was I was like, we oh, get. man, that's so much. Like, crazy. <laughs> and now your bitch has 128. Like, what am I even going to do with all of that? I, You're, like, never going to delete photos ever off of your phone. I think it's going to be audiobooks. Because oh, yeah, I true. don't download audiobooks because of storage. I don't mm-hmm. know how much space they take up, but they're like long ass songs, basically. And songs so take up storage. Photos, so apps. I, I barely have any of it. Oh my God. I like can't get a new app at all. And yeah. every time I need to take a photo for something, I have to delete something I care about and <laughs> like, get it back later after I've deleted the round of photos. Like it's mm-hmm. a pain in the ass. Honestly, it'll be so nice to just, like, I have, like, some of my photos are uploaded on iCloud Drive. Some of them are in my Dropbox. You should just honestly, phone, you know, instead of having them to your iCloud, because hacks, you know, <laughs> not that they're, like, <laughs> dudes, they're, like, fucking cat photos, but, like, you should just honestly put them on my Mac, yeah, my no, computer. Yeah, I haven't done it Because I have so much storage on there, and I'm only using it for, like... The stuff I forget to delete from that computer. <laughs> I'm very bad at like organizing my Mac right now because I only use it to like edit things and then play Sims. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But anyway, I'm very excited to have a new phone. I'm excited about some of the new features. Oh, I guess we could put our two cents in about the headphone jack. Yeah, I know this is gonna sound like so lame, but like I was like iffy about it until I watched the conference and not to say that like their marketing sold me on it, but like they made good points on that. Like it's a, it takes up space. It's an input that serves one purpose only and it takes up valuable space on the inside of the phone. And so just adding it into my thing is like, okay, I get that it is only like one thing that it utilizes because yeah. it's just uh, headphones, but that's not even true, honestly, because there's a lot of things that you can plug into your phone through the jack yeah, to make it is. work. Mm-hmm. Now that you're just going to have to do that with your lightning port, which is fine. I honestly don't give a shit as long as like they start making headphones that have the little lightning port at the bottom. Yeah, they do have some lightning headphones that exist. I know Beats is But doing that'll it, suck your battery, right? Well, I mean, it's going to do it. Because it's in your charging... I mean, it's just, just going to do it no matter what, because, I mean, it's still drawing power from your phone to use headphones. Oh, uh, okay. I and, just feel like it would be more, but whatever. Uh, the only thing that I saw is, it is nice that they're giving you, like, a little dongle to, like, plug into, like... <laughs> dongle? That's what they call it. Like, really? Yeah. Wow. Like, like you just fucking to plug into the fucking lightning port to make it a headphone thing, then, like, they're giving you that for free, which is really nice. But I saw there's, like, a, another one that you plug into the lightning, and then it has two lightning. Ooh, like a splitter? Yeah, which I thought was smart for a second, then I thought it was really fucking dumb, because, like, what you had to do is plug that in, and then you plug in a charger into one of those lightning ports, and then you had to plug in that other dongle that you got into the other lightning port, and then... I'm honestly lost at this point. See? That's I what I mean. I can't even visualize Like, there's this. so much there. Like, they could have made it simpler, but they made it really confusing. Like, I just... I, I appreciate that, like... They want to have more space, like, internally for other things that are more important. And they're right. It is, like, old-ass technology, and that's what they're trying to do. Like, I get it. Um, I'm not going to buy those stupid earbuds, though. I mean, I like the they're idea cool. of them, but they're $160, so no thank And they're thank so you. tiny. And I get that, like, you can't really – if you want to have, like, small, minimalistic headphones that are, like, non-invasive, I guess, like, yeah. But I don't know. I just feel like – Realistically, for the type of person I am with cats, yeah, I mean, they're going to, like, take that and get it under the oven, Mm -hmm. and then I'll never see her again. I mean, I kind of think that they are nice just because, like, I do the cord, like, when I'm walking around, I've got a backpack on carrying things that, like, gets caught in everything. It would be nice to, like, be able to listen to music and stuff or podcasts and just have those in and not have a cord in between me and my pocket, you know? Yeah, and, like, having your phone attached to it, too. Yeah. Because, like, you never know where to put it. I always have it in my boob. (laughs) I mean, you don't have that luxury. No, I don't. And also, I mean, it is annoying when you're talking on the phone and you're using, like, the iPhone headphones and the little microphone like brushes against your collar it's bopping all around you. yeah and it just makes noise so i mean it, it so it'll be, be nice. nice for like wirelessness but i just don't think it's practical for my household yeah and i mean i'm still not paying that price yeah true it's expensive. <laughs> um i don't wear headphones enough to spend that much money on them i think 
Yeah, I mean, I use unless a lot they were of like work, hella but... noise canceling, which I'm sure they are somewhat, but I mean, not, not as much, much as covering your whole ear. Yeah, definitely not. But I don't know. We're not big headphones people either. I know people get really like bitchy about headphones. Like, <laughs> I'm not like I don't fucking know what's a good brand. Honestly, I bought ones for like ninety nine dollars. I regret because they're uncomfortable, but they are really pretty. Yeah, they're just aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, so they're good for Instagram. They're not so great. And like that was a Hanukkah present. Like, <laughs> Anyway. So, this episode is being uploaded on 9-11. Ooh, uh, it's the, uh, it is. It's the 15th anniversary, actually. 15? Yeah, I know. It's 15 years. So, how old were we, we were then? were nine. Nine. Yeah. 2001, wow. 92. Yeah, we were nine. <laughs> he just did that math. I'm like, <laughs> I don't fucking know. Yeah, I just knew fourth grade Miss the Ocean. That's mm. what she remembers. <laughs> yeah. I Do you have like a vivid ass memory cuz everybody says like if you're like our age a little bit younger than us that they have like everybody remembers exactly where they were. Do you remember? Uh yeah, I mean, I don't think I got out of school early that day. I might have, but I'm not sure. I just remember being picked up by my dad. I feel like we might have talked about this last year. Yeah, I think we might have. Um Jesus Christ. I just remember being picked up by my dad, and he was just telling me that something really bad had happened. He didn't say exactly what. Yeah. But but then we were just all home. Me, my dad, and my sister, we were all just home for the rest of the day, and we were. it was just on the news. Like, it was just the whole evening, just the news reports mm -hmm. all evening long. They let you watch it, even though you were young? Yeah, I mean, it was on, and then I also had a, I was a, lot of I had a TV in my room, too, and then when, oh. I went to, when I went to bed, quote-unquote, I was supposed to go to sleep, and I wasn't supposed to have my TV on, but I still turned it on anyway. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember I was, like, I was in class, and my principal, like, she was going, like, around to each classroom with, like, uh, a fucking piece of paper that was just kind of, like, a statement to the teacher what was happening. Yeah. So they could, like, read it and not, like, just, because, you know, it's elementary school or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um but she gave it to my teacher, and then it was, like, immediately after that. She didn't tell us shit. We had no idea what was happening. Yeah. And they didn't turn the TV on or anything because mm -hmm. we were too young. But my they sister... They wanted, like, your parents to be the one to, like, yeah. get in on that. But my sister was in middle school, and she said that they turned on the TV, like, in her classroom. And I'm assuming that they would have done that in high school, too. Because they wow. were old enough to, like, yeah. know what the fuck was happening. Mm -hmm. Um, but then it was like immediately kids were getting taken out of school and I was just left me and Jen Schlachter. We were just like, Hey, <laughs> and I went home and my mom was just watching TV mm -hmm. and like, it was just there and I had no idea what it meant at all. And I was just, uh, we also had like someone in our family that actually worked there and yeah. she had been late to taking her train. So, oh God. yeah. So that was cool. That she was late. Where I grew up, it was close enough to New York to be, like, it basically is in New York. I know, you're now. really close. Yeah, it's about, like, an hour, hour and a half outside of New York. And, and we had so. family, obviously, still there, and mm -hmm. everyone was I fine. Actually, but. I didn't have any family in New York. I don't have any family that lives there. Oh, yeah? But, yeah, I mean, I just know there was a lot of people that, like, you know knew somebody or had family or something like that in the, at least in the city. I can't believe it's, like, 15 years, and then there are people that, like, have never even... Like, yeah. think about it, like, younger than 15, that's, like, 14-year-olds. Yeah. And they totally missed it. You know what I mean? Wow, like, that's wild, so wild to think about. Jesus Christ. <sighs> oh, shit. I remember reading, like, this young adult book when I mm -hmm. was in, I think it was middle school at one of the book fairs. I found this, like, YA book about all these girls that were, like, it was basically, like, Sister of the Traveling Pants style, where it's, like, a group of girls that were all, like, really close friends, but they all lived in New York City, and they all get affected different ways by the towers and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, why the fuck? I don't know why I picked this book to read, but I read it, and it was, like, really wild and honestly probably, like, really exploitative if you think about it. Wow. <laughs> but did you see that Facebook's been, like, under a lot I of... I did just see something about them, yeah. Yeah, they've been under a lot of pressure, I guess, lately, because, one, they're, like, the leading website to see viral fake news website things, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Basically, and, like, there are people on Facebook that I see, and they, and like, do they not look at the little website at the bottom that's showing you, like, where it came from, you know? People just don't know. They just read the headlines, and they just... And they just share true. it. Yeah. And it's always just, like, bullshit. And so, like, they have so much of that trash happening, so they're trying to, like, figure out ways to get that off your timeline. Yeah. But they also have, like, the trending thing, and basically they had a, like, 
9-11 conspiracy theory, like, bombs actually caused it and planes weren't involved kind of story. Yeah. Like, trending for the anniversary was, like, the top thing. And, like, they removed the trending tag for it then to, like, avoid it. I saw something else completely different. What'd you that see? That they had, like, you know how, I guess they do this on Facebook, too, but, like, how hashtags, like, if you do a certain hashtag, it'll have, like, a little symbol after it. Mm-hmm. I guess Facebook had a plane for their 9-11 one, but they changed uh, it now to a candle. Oh, my God. Like, how does that get through? I know. That's insane. Yeah, like, you just put a fucking American flag. You know, yeah, like, I mean, they could have just done a microphone. Just yeah. do one of those. A candle is fine yeah, a candle too. is pretty good. Wow, that's better than a plane. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's so ridiculous. Oh shit! But if any of you guys were affected by this directly, you know, especially our, our Muslim listeners, yes, especially. Mm-hmm. Um, our thoughts are with you. Pose. I'm sure it's made your life a living hell, honestly. Yeah. And we know that Muslims are not inherently terrorists. Bullshit. I can't imagine what it's like to deal with that shit on a daily basis. So my thoughts are with you. But let's um, go to questions. Because yeah, those are questions? usually more Beppo. All right. Know? Well, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back with the questions. This episode of Coffee with Creature was brought to you by Eloquy. Eloquy is a privately owned online retailer offering women's plus size clothing and accessories. Eloquy is an online destination for contemporary fast fashion in sizes 14 through 28, and they offer a sophisticated and figure-conscious fit. And so, uh, Rachel got to try out a couple yes, items I did. from Eloquy. And <laughs> Most exciting pretty- thing ever, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got to try them out, first of all. Every single thing I got is, like, the most nice-ass material. Like, everything is such good quality and really well-made, and everything fit freaking amazing and it's so easy to like find your size and everything on there and it's just so nice because they have like modern silhouettes and like modern trendy things that you would never see from most retailers in like the plus size section because like most of them you go to it's just really weird like flowy things with tons of weird prints and it's just not cute and this has like all of the cool silhouettes that you've been seeing everybody rocking but in everyone's size so it's amazing and so what were the three pieces of clothing that you got from them? Well, I got these really amazing, like, high-waisted leggings, and they're basically, like, pants because they're super thick and, yeah, like, I your was, underwear don't show and everything. I was like, I want a pair of those because I know. they're, like, so thick and they just look so well-made and so comfortable. I can't wait I for it to them. get colder so I get to wear them <laughs> with, like, my boots, you know? And then I got this one top that had, like, a lace cutout thing that was really pretty, and then I got another top that I've been wearing, like, to death because it's just, like, a really cute black blouse, but it has a really deep V so I like to like Uh, make my bralettes pop out you know (laughs) but everything is super cute and they have like things where you'll see like a really trendy silhouette like the whole um, collared shirts now that they have that are like it basically looks like you have a choker on and then your whole torso is kind of not your torso then your Your chest and your clavicle is like exposed (laughs) but then it like hooks in the back and those are like really popular right now and I've legit never seen them above like a size large oh wow that's really awesome so that was really cool and they just like they have a lot of different things there. they've got dresses skirts tops sweaters coats belts pants. also you name it they've got it all of like the business stuff especially if you work in an office and you have to be wearing like a suit or like a nice pant blouse situation yeah, like they yeah. have really really cute office stuff that i mean i wish i didn't work from home i'm like okay <laughs> i could just look like a goddamn binge that's so awesome. But we also do have a really awesome deal for yes. you guys. So you can try out Eloquy. And honestly, this is a pretty awesome deal. So when you guys go to eloquy.com slash CWC, that's E-L-O-Q-U-I-I. No, two that's eyes. a little weird there. But uh, if you go to eloquy.com slash CWC, you'll get 50% off your first item and then 40% off any additional items in your order when you use the code CWC at checkout as well. Yo, I should use that code, honestly. Honestly, that's really <laughs> that's awesome. That's a really I, good that's deal. That's so much. So yeah, definitely check out eloquy.com. That's E-L-O-Q-U-I-I dot com slash CWC and use code CWC to get 50% off your first item and 40% any other items. Awesome. All right, question time, and it's going to be Patreon, as per usual, first. <laughs> yes, that's patreon.com slash coffee with Gradle. <laughs> For all your Patreon. I got my radio voice out. <laughs> all right, what's the question? First one's from Beth. 
who has said, Hey, Rachel and Chunks, I'm seeing a therapist for the first time ever this Saturday, and I'd like to thank you guys and Rachel especially for being so open and honest about going to therapy and mental health. It's really helped me realize that therapy might be a good option for me too. Oh my God, that's amazing. In the meantime, I've mostly just self-diagnosed myself with anxiety, considering everything I go through definitely points a finger towards anxiety as the culprit for my instability. Do you have any thoughts on self-diagnosis as a means of validating? I mean, I was definitely researching a lot before I actually got my ass to yeah. get my diagnosis. I mean, you, you know? pretty much got the anxiety and depression things like figured out. You didn't know that there was the overarching PTSD to go yeah. along with that. But like... Because like, you know, you'll find yourself taking all those quizzes or just like looking at lists of symptoms. And like, honestly, when you're, you know, thinking of suicide, it's pretty easy to figure out like <laughs> where you are. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I just feel like... I feel like, you know, I'm not all about self-diagnosis and then not getting any, like, you know, professional help. Because I feel like that could be, I mean, it it could just be you could, one, not really find out what you actually have, like me with the PTSD thing. Like, I could have just never, because that's really helpful in figuring out why I am so anxious and depressed, you know? Yeah. So, like, I just want people to, like, get the help that they deserve, so I feel like still seeing someone is so important, but it can be very validating, and it's also validating when you do get the diagnosis, too. Mm -hmm. I think it's, like... But I don't want people to just be, like, you know, having a rough month, and then, you know, looking online, and then thinking the worst, you know? And then I feel like that's when it can get, you know, bad. Yeah. (laughs) I think it's like, I think it's a totally fine idea to like, you know, be looking into it yourself a little bit, just trying to, you know, see, think about how you normally act and then what's going on right now and seeing like, is there something like a trend that I'm seeing that, yeah. And if you see yourself checking off a lot of boxes, then, you know, just talk to someone that you trust that can probably lead you to getting help. Like if it's a school counselor, if it's your doctor, like a family member like a friend like just talking to someone and being like hey i'm seeing these symptoms and i just want to like you know i just feel like telling someone else is important too even if it's not a therapist yet but you might get there eventually yeah also your doctor can do a lot for you too Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't think to like go to their doctor but like sometimes there are physical reasons for why you're experiencing mental health so it's always always good to check yeah well, glad to hear that you're going. Uh, yeah. A couple of guys have said that you're starting to go to therapy, and, you know, it's really awesome to hear that. If I could do one thing, and it's help people in that way to, like, get yeah, them to, to feel motivated to go, and then something positive comes of that, that's, like, fucking amazing, and I'm yeah, doing my fantastic. job. So that's amazing. Jackie has asked, wait, are jellyfish considered plants or fish since they have no brains? I don't think they're a plant, but they're definitely not a fish. They're, like, or just... Or an algae. Plant or algae. They're probably like whatever a, uh, I what's, don't know, like some sort that? of pod, you know, <laughs> like something pod. Just a pod? Yeah, you know what I mean though. Like, <laughs> not, qu- nah, I'm not a girl. <laughs> not get a woman. All right, and the next one's from Alicia, who said, Hey, guys and Chunks, Rachel, I know you're looking for jobs because of the whole YouTube thing. Are you uh, considering going back to school for something regarding Merlin, marine life? Marlene. Marlene life. <laughs> yeah. And such, or what kind of jobs are you looking at? Sorry, this is too personal. Oh, I mean, I'm not doing any marine life, and I'm not going back to school just because I have student loans mm-hmm. that I got to pay off. You know, school may be thinking about in the future if we ever want to, like, yeah. learn something new. For both of us, really, yeah. but... I mean, honestly, the whole, like, terms of service, like, notifying people about their YouTube vulgarity, that's not really the reason why I've been looking to other places for income. It's really just Didn't really help the cause, you know? It's another little drop in the bucket. Oh, but. yeah. That was just like a, ha see where my life's heading. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, with the podcast and other means, I mean, I don't even make my most stable income doing YouTube. And it's just like, I cannot do it where I have to rely solely on that platform to like make a livable wage. Like I just want to be doing other things so that when I upload videos to YouTube, it's not like, Ooh, could I upload this idea or that one always gets less views. So I have to upload this so I can pay rent, you know, like I don't want to do that shit. Yeah. It could be actually like Whatever I want, yeah. whenever I want, not having to stick to a schedule because honestly, I just don't find it like fulfilling enough anymore to just be uploading the videos, like whatever, like, you know, once a week, twice a week. 
it's just not, I feel like it's not enough for me. And that's why I started doing the podcast and started looking for outside work. And also I just want to have like a social media job so that I have on my resume that not only do I have like the six years right now of social media experience, you know, experience expertise. I almost said, I was like, wait, no, (laughs) but like having that experience with another company, that's not my, my cell phone business will help so much with the future jobs. And like, I just know that YouTube just making videos was never going to be like what I did for my whole life, you Mm -hmm. know? Like it's, I just feel like I'll never stop having videos, but like, I just don't want it to be like the only way I make money. Like, no, cause you have to make crappy videos. (laughs) Like (laughs) that's straight up what you have to do or just do a lot of sponsored content, which I don't, obviously I don't mind doing sponsored content cause it does have, you know, a better payout and I can pay my bills. But if I have to rely on it, then that pisses people off. And I would rather just have my time being spent doing stuff that doesn't get people yelling at me. Yeah. So that's the kind of the content you want to make. <laughs> plus, I just think working for other people will help me grow as a person. I'm very isolated yeah. doing this. And I, I don't live in, like, L.A. where I have a more collaborative community. I just need, like, more um, peers and just... I don't know, having a more structured schedule, I think that'll really help my mental health. So Yeah, definitely. But I yeah, like I'm still gonna be fucking doing the podcast, still gonna have live streams, Twitch, Periscope, and Snapchat. Every social media yeah. that exists. So it's not like I feel like it's not even gonna be like I am at all giving anything up. It's just like I can cut back as much as I want and also have rent money yes whoa like crazy i mean like i pay my bills but man is it fun (laughs) each month you know oh fuck all right so i know that you asked for some quote unquote weird questions yes you did what do you got going on i have some you guys delivered on the old (laughs) coffee with rachel hashtag and just following me on twitter which was at rachel whitehurst oh my god Um, self-promotion but yeah This is amazing, and I'm so glad I'm finally being asked this. (laughs) What is your favorite vegetable to chop? This is something that's just... That's a great question. I'll tell you my least favorite first. Okay. Brussels sprouts. I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Because you got to chop it two to four ways to get it done. All with these leaves flying Flying everywhere. Flying everywhere. It's such a hassle. They're so... That's why you want to get them, like, pre-cut up, but then it's like, oh, the plastic, you know? It's just not worth it. Um, So I would say those are my least favorite, but my favorite are, like, oh, like a blue potato, purple potato. Yeah, they they have a nice little... You know, you know what I mean? like you slide right, <laughs> <laughs> right into those DMs. <laughs> yeah, so they're good. I like them. Um, also, carrots. I'm not a fan of chopping. They have a little bit too much resistance. They are very sturdy. <laughs> yeah, asparagus though, a good time. You Onions, don't even have to chop. Well, well, yeah, sometimes you do chop asparagus. Now, if you get a good mince on a nice red onion, it could really toot your. I horn. do not like doing an onion because one, they make me cry. Two, I think they're annoying as fuck to chop. They are annoying, but if you do it right, you feel so satisfied. Am I wrong? Yeah, I'm gonna have to say that my favorite is a potato. Yeah, potatoes are good. Classic. A fucking yam. Oh no, yams no, are a little too hearty. Yeah, they are dense as fuck. What about like a squash? Ooh, a zucchini. Ooh, zucchinis are so nice to chop. Actually. <laughs> Cucumber. Oh, shit. Cucumber the might be my favorite one. It smells fantastic. I was just going to say, the aroma alone. <laughs> I love this content. Oh, Guys, fuck. I'm quitting YouTube to talk about vegetables <laughs> on my podcast. Oh, God. I'm not quitting. You know. I don't cry. <laughs> I know. I'm literally crying about this. Okay. Um, oh. Would you rather fight one Chris-sized bunny or three bunny-sized Chris's? Oh my god, what? A Chris-sized bunny would be too fucking scary. Think about that. <laughs> Those teeth? No. Oh my god. I'm not into that. I would probably... Wait, am I supposed to kill it? What am I doing with it? You're fighting. Oh, I'm fighting it. Oh, yeah, right, I'll, so fight, fight I'll fight... three me, Lila-sized? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just don't really want to fight you. <laughs> Let's make up. Um, favorite flavor? Vinegar. Oh my god, this is... <laughs> Straight up. Such a, Any pickling a brine... <laughs> Splash it on me. Oh, my they should make a ge- they they should make a replica fragrance that's like, um, I don't know, like, just pickle brine, <laughs> like Jewish jelly in the Bronx. 
in like 1947. Oh my god! And it's like the barrel of pickle juice, a slight pastrom, like you know, just little things. A nice whole grain mustard. What the? (laughs) I actually would love that. What would it be called? Um, what do we have? Deli? Like New York Deli? Just no. It would be like Jewish Deli. You know, we'd have to make it clear because like there's delis and then there's delis. We we do the deli correct, in my opinion. I'm gonna have to say my favorite flavor <laughs> is yes. mint. Really? I know it's lame. <laughs> That's so. But there's weird. lots of different mints, and I like it. Whoa, it's great. <laughs> do you have a favorite mint? Certs. <laughs> oh my god! Just kidding. It's like spearmint. Certs are one of those things where, like, one time I had a stomach virus and I kept throwing up, and I would have a cert after each time I threw up. Oh my god! Because I wanted to get the flavor, you know. So is it one of those things you can't? Now eat? I can never eat it. I don't even know if they still are a brand. All right, so them pool and peel Twizzlers and uh, Sour Patch Kids. She done. She done. Yeah, and chicken. <laughs> We're done. Oh god. Um. Also, ever eating at a Chili's is <laughs> off the table. I don't know if I told that story before. Oh no, God! What? Because I used to fucking love going there because you get the never chips and eaten salsa. At Chili's before ever in my life. It's shitty. You go to if you're gonna get like shitty fakeness, go to um, like on the border instead because mm-hmm. they have better chips and salsa. But Chili's was cool because you could get like chips and salsa unlimited. Actually, I think that is on the border as well. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. Whatever. Either way, it was lit. And we would sit at those, like, really tall tables. And you're sitting, like, the tall stool, you know? Yeah. And I would go to the bathroom. Because I'm that girl that has to check out the bathroom at every place we go to. (laughs) To, like, see if it's cute. Like, especially at a restaurant. Like, I judge the restaurant based off of if the bathroom has a cool vibe. I feel you on that. Like, Olive Garden, it kind of feels like you're on campus when you're in that bathroom and then you walk out and then you see like a, a lion like in Boston a wall and you're like okay <laughs> and then I would say like on the border had a cool bathroom because it was just like all crazy tile everywhere yeah. and there was this place by my house called Cheeseburger in Paradise which is totally not there anymore and they had like a <laughs> fucking tropical themed bathroom Ooh, and I was like fuck interesting. yes interesting but Chili's had, I don't even remember what it looked like, because all I remember was the woman throwing up, and I never <laughs> went back to that place again, and I couldn't eat after it either. It was horrible, because I was shitting, so, you know, that usually takes some time, and she came in while I was in there, and, oh, like, no. I was trapped, like, it, you know what I mean? Like, you can't just leave. Yeah. And I didn't want her to know that I was leaving because she was doing that. That's horrible. It was horrible. Wow. <laughs> it that's really terrible. scarred me. <laughs> Shit. So I would never go back there. Oh my god. Just letting you know. <laughs> anyway. What's your favorite memory of Doritos? Um, oh shit, what the fuck? That's a good question. I don't know if I actually really am a Dorito bench. I mean I'm know. not gonna lie, I used to tolerate them. I much preferred like if you're at a fucking childhood party and you got a bowl of like Cheese curls, pretzels, Ruffled Lays, shitty Lays with no flavor, or sour cream and onion. Those were like the two flavors. Yo, God, or this barbecue, is everything. And then you would have like Doritos. I was always pretzel and potato chip bitch. I didn't want anything that would leave me orange in case I was trying to hook up. Uh, Even in like fifth grade, <laughs> <laughs> she knew <laughs> he lied. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I definitely went for them pretzels and the Doritos. I went for the Doritos. Oh, uh, you were a Dorito were back a in Dur- the day. I were a Dorito. That's fine, but I was also like eating tons of frosting. <laughs> like <laughs> I was the bitch that always got the piece of cake that had like several frosting roses on it. Oh my god! And I always like shit green after like, <laughs> six weeks, you know, because you're eating like. So much food coloring. Yeah, yeah. It's so much. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, like, this one party I went to, it was, like, they had black frosting. It was horrible. Wow. Nice. It was just emo cake. <laughs> that was, like, a Batman cake. Uh, well, I have a Reddit question. Mm, did you that, read it? <laughs> that's a R. Cafe Rachel. Yes. Ignoring that terrible pun. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this says, hey, Rachel, Chris, Squan, and Chunka. Squan. Longtime fan of Rachel. For reference, I started watching Rachel in 2011. Whoa. A uh, quick question. Ever since I moved out to Greensburg, PA from New York, I've been a huge Sheets fan Oh, but after listening to the podcast, dancing with the devil, the need to visit a Wawa is strong. I was just wondering what would you recommend for first time Wawa goer to get 
to get and indulge in. <laughs> Chris reads the word Wawa and he loses all I, I ability lost to speak. All function. I'm salivating <laughs> He's just right now. About <laughs> I actually really was. <laughs> okay, so mind. You, hold on, I'm not done yet. <laughs> mind you, I had I have a robust body type, so nothing is off limits. Love you guys, and I hope the rest of your week is best as it can be. Okay, robust hoagie. Yes. You Go know, to those touch screens. There's a million options. You know, the world is your oyster when you go there. Really customize a hoagie. I'm Make it as big one. as possible. <laughs> oh, man. And, okay, if you're just feeling fun, of course, get yourself, like, a bag of kettle cooked salt and vinegar chips to stick inside the hoagie or whatever chip of Ooh, choice. Yes. Um, the hummus plate. Fantastic option. A coffee, 20 ounce. You have to get at least a 20 ounce. You can get a 24 if you're feeling really. 16 if you're like, I am already hyped. <laughs> I don't know, me when I enter It's well. easy to be extra hyped. You could get one of their like lit beverages. They have like smoothies. They basically have like a frappuccino situation going on. And they are tasty, but they're not coffee. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That sounds like a great first order. Probably one of those 99 cent cans of Arizona that are huge as fuck. Oh, yeah. That you really have to get something from, like, the refrigerated section. Oh, yeah. And it Absolutely. was always one of those cans. And I would get a, a, what was it, a cow tail? Oh, my God. Oh, man. If they made vegan cow tails, what would they call them? Oh, my God. Soy tails. <laughs> Soy tendril, soy stock. What is a soybean, honestly? Like, you know, like, how does she grow? I was telling Chris that for Halloween, I'm going to dress as a Brussels sprout stock. Oh, my God. Like, I'm just going to so wear, great. like, green from head to toe and then just get, like, giant basketballs and paint them, like, or, okay, balloons, probably. <laughs> basketballs. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't worked out the logistics. <laughs> Maybe I would take, like, I don't know, you go to, like, the craft store and you get, like, a foam. What if you use tennis balls? They're too small. Oh my god. I want They're big small. bulbous brow sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> Browse. Sprout sprouts. Um me when I pluck. <laughs> anyway, what's the next one? Let's question? get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh my god. Uh this is a question for the chunks. Wonderful. <laughs> I'll answer for them. What's it like to be such fluffy goodness? Chris and Rachel, you can answer too if you like. <laughs> I think they love it and they know it and they leave it everywhere. They're Lila there. is totally aware of all of the things that she does to be cute. She knows and get how to manipulate attention. us. She's she, such a Gemini. She, <laughs> and Squeezie's also a Gemini and in a totally different way. Like, they are the sun and the moon. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> but they know. They're aware. Where's your Julianne, Chris? <laughs> and then, like, the most awful screenshot of me I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, honestly, though, where is it? You still haven't shown me. <laughs> like, uh, honestly, some of the crap that I put out on the internet, like, who the fuck allowed Who were this? we? Like, someone get me a goddamn assistant to, like, tell me not to look I like mean, this. I mean, the fact that our first video, well, not our first video together, but, like, the boyfriend tag video that... You know, I look like a caveman still exists. I know. For years. Yeah. <laughs> His caveman hus. <laughs> and that's we need to redo shitty that video. Blue striped shirt. I've been telling Chris that on our anniversary or like near it, we're gonna redo the boyfriend tag in twenty <laughs> what year? Twenty sixteen. Yeah, we we're looking for like what one is like the real one, but we we're keep, gonna have to watch the old one and like write the questions down. We keep finding these ones and they're so weird. <laughs> oh my god. There was this one that was like it asks the really weirdest questions ever, so and we dumb. might just do it, <laughs> just because it is so insane. I can't remember what the questions were. I oh, fuck. I wonder if I, like, screenshotted it. I don't know. I'm going to have to, like, Google it. I think that was how I found those shitty articles about, like... Oh, uh, you the marriage articles? Yeah, I think that was what it was. Oh, but fuck. <laughs> I just lost everything I was trying to look at. Okay. Um, which one of your toes is your favorite? Ooh, interesting. Ooh. I'm gonna have to say the one next to the big toe. Interesting. My like middle f- fucking toe. <laughs> you mean your index toe? I don't know. The one that's next to your big toe. Yeah, It'd my pointer like- toe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I point with my big O. I like my big O, just because he's the big O. Whatever. He's I nice. beg to differ. Wow, whatever. He's not that great. <laughs> This one just says beats. 
<laughs> like the vegetable. Oh. <laughs> yes. I am pro beet. Never used to be when I used to eat them steamed from a can growing up. Why do parents make us like they don't even try to make vegetables like taste good. Mm-hmm. And then we grow up and we're like, shit, vegetables I like are all of this. Tasty. Except for if it wasn't just like everyone just steamed everything. I mean, that's just white people. Mm-hmm. They just there were like a bag of steamed Brussels as a country. Like, you know, I don't know how this happened, but this just unlocked something for me. You you know how like I didn't used to like cranberry sauce until like very recently. No, I didn't know this. Well, I like I never ever went for cranberry sauce. I never like chose to have that on my plate even at thanksgiving until very recently because of your tender affection affection for for it it. (laughs) whoa why did you choose the same phrase you know like how did that happen i hate it but it unlocked the reason why i never liked eating cranberry sauce it was just just at one time at like some stupid chain restaurant like ruby tuesdays or something like that i got salad bar with whatever I was getting. So I went Ruby up there. Tuesdays did have a salad bar. And for whatever reason, I thought that these slices that kind of looked like jello were just jello slices and not <laughs> cranberry. And so I got them thinking they were like cherry jello. And then so I went back and I had a bite of it and it was not what I was expecting at all. And not to say it was bad. Yeah, that's the like, worst. Like shit that turns you off is like, wow, it surprised me. And now I'm not going to eat this for a decade. Yeah, I know. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> like into the rain again. I hate that so much. Like people like are so afraid to eat food. Like I will literally put anything in my mouth if you tell me it's food. And I will try it. And guess what? If you don't like it, you swallow, you take a little swig of some fucking whatever, Bev. I mean, fuck, we drank some coffee that came out of a cat's ass. <laughs> I know. Like, what won't I do at this point? <gasps> oh, fuck. Like, just, that's, that's the thing. Uh, but I'm glad. I mean, honestly, I feel like cranberry sauce on a salad would be great if it was like a turkey salad. Little, oh, like, yeah, that would be A little like, roasted potato in there, maybe a little green bean. Wow, you know. That sounds fucking great. Let's do it. That's Russell in my jimmies right now. I mean, considering we, a lot of people put dried cranberries from Ocean Spray in their goddamn salads, like, they think they're <laughs> so high class, too. We see you. <laughs> like, I remember, like, the one... I used one, to think that was crazy. <laughs> I know. I remember, like, the special salad we would make was literally just, like, iceberg... <laughs> With <laughs> cucumber, shredded carrot from a bag, and then it was cranberry and sunflower seeds, and then you just use like whatever fucking Newman's own dressing. It also used to be crazy when you put in some bell pepper in a salad. In a salad, yeah. You ever have that? Like, wow, that's crazy. No, I, I have had that. <laughs> it was usually yellow for some reason. Now my salads aren't even salads; they're like quinoa with leaves. <laughs> like, it's quinoa just, and kale and just like flax seeds and because shit, you like. want like yeah my salads are very seedy I would they're say. very extra because you want like a grain it helps so I much I'm so mad it's Sunday and my fucking favorite place is closed they could be open 24 7 that'd be great I know um <laughs> what exactly is the function of a rubber deck I would say style they're there for comedic benefit they float yeah. in tubs yes so that or they're there for enjoyment yeah, aesthetics, nostalgia, comedy. <laughs> Me. <laughs> In a nutshell. Do lizards understand the concept of betrayal? I don't know. We'd have to ask Bobby. <laughs> like, I feel like he would know the concept of betrayal. <laughs> There's like a big conspiracy theory weird. that like uh, Taylor Swift is a lizard. <laughs> but I don't know. Is a snake a lizard? <laughs> oh, I just I don't God. know what I'm even saying. I just like being shady. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever finished anything at the Cheesecake Factory? Good call. The bread basket. Oh yeah, the bread basket has been destroyed. You know that one fucking salad that we used to get, and like we would like. I would I remember, get the shrimp scampi, which, like, could feed a colony. Yeah, and I would get the one salad that was, like, a southwestern salad, and it came It had the whole like, southwest <laughs> there on your plate. It was so big. What the fuck? And then the you cheesecake get the slices are, like... You get lunch size, too, and it's still, like, bigger than my face. Yeah. It's literally, like, a quarter of a cake anytime you get a slice of cake. Would you guys ever get another chunk or another uh, another pet? <laughs> Well, yeah, we would get another cat, but if we could get something that wasn't a cat, what would we get? Ooh, interesting. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't want anything that's got, like... A chameleon would be sweet. Yeah. 
I feel. Bad. I don't know if I'm like the type of person that would have a reptile. I feel like there's a lot that goes with that. If I was gonna have, I mean, does fish count in this? Um. Yeah, Chris. Fish are animals. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> That's then. Uh, horrible. It should be fish, even for you. Come Duh. On, I would fish. have an aquarium. I'm just saying, like a chameleon would be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Chameleon be so sweet. Like it's <laughs> how tubular with this fucking chameleon. Let's play. It. <laughs> anyway, that was the movie Brink. Um, Chris has never even seen that movie. He's just fake laughing at this point. Yeah, shut up. But I would have an aquarium, like a nice salt ass water one that was like right in the wall. So like you see the aquarium on both sides, like that Leonardo DiCaprio version of Juliet and Romeo. Oh my god, Juliet and Romeo because women are better. Um, Romeo plus Juliet. <laughs> yeah. You're right. That was so weird. <laughs> um, but I would also get birds, too, because I just love them, even though they shit everywhere. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the fish. <laughs> He's really anti-bird, I feel. Well, you know, the cages. You know, it's just a little bit. We wouldn't have to get a cage. You could get one of those, like, branches in the corner of your room. Okay, I guess that works. If we had, like, a big, like, I would have, like, a fucking white cockatoo situation. Oh, my God. Can you imagine if you had, like, Lila, a, basically. a parrot or something that, like... Talk to Lila. That talked to Lila. Lila is Eliza Thorn junk. <laughs> Who squeezes Nigel. No, he's Darwin. <laughs> he's so... No, he's Donnie, actually, if oh you think about God. it. He's lit. <laughs> um, how are we liking Stranger Things? We're loving it. Um, I love every character. Every much. character is fantastic. Except for, like, those other people that hang out with What's-Her-Face and her boyfriend. Oh, my God. Uh, those, Steve. Those, like, other two kids. Yeah, the yeah. people that hang out with him. Fuck them. Though he shouldn't have been taking pictures of those weird as fuck. Yeah. I feel like that always happens. Like, you give a weird kid a camera, and he always got to take those weird pics, you know? Every movie. <laughs> Um, if you could be a toe, which toe would you be and why? I mean, there's a lot of toe (laughs) questions. We got a, like, podiatrist on the line here. If I had to be a toe, I would just be the pinky toe because, you know, he's She's not doing a lot of work. Yeah, she just gets to hang out. Yeah. But also is kind of like on the exterior edge, you know, gets bumped a little bit. So it's a little dangerous. I'd still pick the same toe I've been choosing this whole time. <laughs> the index uh, oh toe. <laughs> All right, got an email question here. Application resume questions. Do you guys have any tips on how to get organized, such as deadlines, scholarship applications, how to even fill out a college application? Also, did you guys fill out FAFSA? Oh, oh. God. And how do you go about the process and did it actually give you money? God, uh, FAFSA. It, I mean, it gave loans, you know. Yeah. It's, that's, like, just how you get the government loans that are, like, the cheaper interest rate. Those were not fun. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I would say, like, having a planner or a calendar that you can see, like, when you need to submit things. I mean, especially a planner. Yeah. Because you can write, like, months ahead mm-hmm. would be really mm-hmm. helpful. Especially, like, making sure you also mark down, like, time to get it done at a comfortable time so you're not, like, rushing, you know? Yeah. Like, know when it's due, but also know, like, when you want to have it done by. Yeah, and something that I do a lot is, like... I'll make new folders of bookmarks with, like, different things. Like, if you're doing, like, scholarships, I would just bookmark all the different ones you're looking at. Just so that way, like, you could do research and have them there, but you don't have to, like, try and remember what they all are. You just have them all bookmarked there so we come back at a later date and fill yeah. them out and stuff. That's just something that I do a lot to organize a lot of deadlines and shit one time. If you had to choose between overcooked pasta or soggy bread, which would you pick and why? Show your work. <laughs> um... <laughs> I would pick overcooked pasta. Soggy bread's gross. Yeah, just no. No. Uh, yeah, there's not too much I would eat soggy, soggy bread for. <laughs> you know, like, there's not too many things you could put up against soggy bread that and I would choose soggy bread for. And I feel what you're saying. Yeah, Chris, it's like olives or anything <laughs> <laughs> at all. Stop. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh. I just cannot believe that you held a grudge against Ocean Spray Cranberry Sauce just because you didn't expect it. Yeah, like, well, that's you know, so... That's a powerful feeling. It was like, I, <laughs> I mean, I didn't hate it, but man, she wasn't cherry, so... I just recently got engaged. If the chunks were wedding planners, what would the aesthetics be? Well, well congratulations. congratulations. Oh my god, chinks again. <laughs> I feel like Squeezie's wedding plan would be, like, just luxury (laughs) big ornate centerpieces and like 
I don't know, just something that he'd get a cool band. Something that Emily Gilmore would plan, you know. But not as old. Just like very fancy though. Elegant, classy. Classic. Very luxury. Know? Lila would be She'd have a hoot and holler in affair. <laughs> I feel like everything would be served family style. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> what? He's just typing and laughing at me. I don't understand. I'm writing down for a fucking title of the podcast. Uh, because I feel like she would have, you know, family style stuff and she'd have like a whole <laughs> lot of group dance choreography, you know? Oh my God. Do you think cotton eye joeing or electric sliding would happen? Oh yeah. Can you picture her doing like <clears throat> Charlie Brown, like Charlie <laughs> Brown, like she'd do it. I would hate her wedding, by the way. Like, I, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like I would not even attend because I knew that oh there'd be like karaoke. Wow. Um, <laughs> sorry. I would go to squeezies though. That sounds lit. <laughs> well, thanks for having a cup of something with us today. Yeah, my pumpkin space is cold now. (laughs) Pumpkin cold. (laughs) Um, We'll see you guys in our next one. Yeah, bye. Bye. All right, Beach Bunches. This week, you are going to Stars Hollow. I don't know if we've done this before. We might have. I feel like we did. Oh, But, I mean, we're always willing to go back to Stars Hollow. Uh, So let's start off with Nicole Dowling, who is down at the lake watching Jess get attacked by a swan. Carissa is Kirk, who is cruising through the town's first traffic light. Alicia Schreiner is Rory's shrine to Harvard. Oh, rip. (laughs) Bailey Lynn is Lorelai bailing Emily out of jail. (laughs) Jackie Goldfarb is Emily deciding on gold or silver jewelry for her vow renewment. Sloan Nolan is Luke beeping at Digger to slow down as he speeds through town. Sarah Booth is running the doggy swami booth. Allison Sense is just thinking that nothing in this town makes any sense. Hunter Curtis is hunting for the missing Easter eggs. Oh my god. <laughs> Megan Rackley is waiting for Lorelai and Rory to finish sitting in their racquetball court. Kate Convery is conversing with Miss Patty about the latest gossip. Honestly, me. <laughs> Danielle Manus is Tobin, the night manager of the Independence Inn. Always a manager. <laughs> he just, like, fucking disappeared. Yeah, I know, right? Like, <laughs> what the fuck happened to him? It burned down and then he was gone. Oh, my God! He really didn't work out as a night manager. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Collins is Taylor Dozy yelling at all the troubadours. Emma Corbeil is Suki making a Cornish hen recipe. Heather Ann is the entire town making sure Lorelai doesn't adopt any animals. Sloane Fuller is the town half full of residents for the town meeting. Angelica Feliz is Dean always being jealous of Jess. Yeah, I would be too. <laughs> Courtney Hall is Stars Hollow. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> <Just> big. <Stars> <laughs> Becca Jansen is Miss Patty beckoning to all the men in town. Angela Sue is Suki being incredibly clumsy in the kitchen. Michelle North is Luke, Lorelai, Rory, and Logan going north to Martha's Vineyard. Let's hope it's really north. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Aaron Bray is one of the brave reenactors of the Battle of Stars Hollow. (laughs) Alice and Teresa is Suki and Jackson's son, Davey. He also disappears. Like, where did he go? (laughs) Jade Agoshi is Lane going on tour with Hep Alien. My Elizabeth is Liz's earrings that Luke gives to Lorelai. Laura Collins is making a call in Luke's and getting yelled at for using a cell phone. Ishbel Mendez is Luke and Lorelai breaking the town bell. Talia Miller is a troubadour milling about the town square. Cavaleos is all of Stars Hollow attending Cinnamon the Cat's Wake. Me, also. <laughs> Margarita is trading in their margarita for a Rory drink. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah Labelson is Miss Kim labeling antiques. Daisy Blossom Dottie is Rory and Jess's blossoming relationship that was tragically cut short. All because they wanted to do a spinoff show. Emily Lewis is Emily Gilmore organizing a DAR event. Chloe Archer is one of the Chilton moms. Anthony Hood is Taylor walking around in a hoodie speaking in a German accent. (laughs) (laughs) Mariah Hanna is getting their hands on a Bebette ate oatmeal shirt. Elizabeth Holbrook is Rory going to visit Jess in Brooklyn. Jennifer Habgood is Paris telling the entire Yale Daily News staff that they are not good enough. (laughs) Madison Greer is Jackson flipping out about a certain green crop growing in his field. Madison Wolf is wolfing down Suki's amazing ratatouille. Megan McNally is Max Medina awkwardly running into Rory. Medina. (laughs) Max. Skylar Medley is the couple who saw the stars in the sky and named Stars Hollow. What a fabulous story that was. 
Megan Prius is Rory's Prius. Whoa, say that <laughs> three times fast. Corey Springfield is Jackson tending to his fields, making a new hybrid crop. Cat is the cat that hung around the independent thing. Hung around. Hung around. <laughs> the agen <Agendaz> cat. <laughs> Ilka is Emily firing a maid for wrinkling her silk pillowcases. Jax is Jackson sleeping with his zucchini. And Nicole Allen is getting an international grab bag food from Al's Pancake World. Courtney White is the white snow Lorelai can smell coming. Bridge Gary Davis is participating in the knit-a-thon to repair the bridge. Jennifer Cornwell is buying some corn from the pop-up farmer's market. Sophia Cock is Taylor getting cocky about his knowledge of town rules. Ash Rozelle is Lorelai walking through the ashes of the Independence Inn. That is so dark. That's real dark. Jackie Burkhart is Jess breaking all of our hearts by leaving the show. <laughs> you can tell we're Jess fans. <laughs> you and we're so biased. <laughs> Beth Fonseca is Babette and Maury setting up for Halloween. Jackie Brigiulio is Paul Anka who can only walk downstairs that are draped with a jacket. Christina Contreras is Lorelai and Rory backpacking cross country. He could not get that I out. could not do that. <laughs> Catherine Simpson is Dean simply being annoying as fuck. <laughs> Marlene Nudge is Marty waking up with no clothes at Yale. Also, Marty is also on the fucking annoying scale. Like, Dean and Marty are my two least favorites. Yep. Um, also, Christopher. TI-83 Calculator, a.k.a. Ian Murphy, is... We see you. <laughs> whoa. Is Christopher begging to pay Rory's Yale fees? Cater Liriano is Paris leering at all the incompetent journalists at the Yale Daily News. Rebecca O'Donnell is offended by the odor of the lost Easter eggs. Kendall Berg is ordering a burger at Kirk's. Oh, my God. <laughs> Allie McGregor is trying to join Hep Allian... <laughs> Megan Grilly is the grill in the Dragonfly Inn catching fire. Wow, yikes. Um, Chloe Killup is swooning over Jess reading To Kill a Mockingbird. Taco Roach is not sure what type of taco they'll get from Al's Pancake World. Cassandra Buckout is Christopher popping in and out of everyone's lives. So real. <laughs> Haley Cadwalder is Kirk driving Taylor's car through Luke's wall. Camelia Malky is Emily buying everything she sees in the mall. Maddie Pullman is Luke carving one of the poles of the huppa. Oh my god, the huppa! <laughs> we, I want to see their wedding under that fucking hub. Okay. Amanda Marie is Luke spontaneously marrying Nicole. That whole plot fucking sucks. So dumb. Allison Francois is Jess being frankly upset that Rory dropped out of Yale. Caitlin Whalen is Luke wailing about Taylor's choices at the town meeting. Cody Robinson is Rory accidentally robbing flour from Dozies. It was cornstarch. Oh my god, it was cornstarch. Wow, Chris. Fucking god. Wow. Lauren Siobhan is the reenactment soldiers shivering in the night. Sarah Seaman is Kyle heading out to sea with the Navy. Oh my god, I love Kyle. Dana Daly is Lorelai getting her daily cup of coffee from Luke's. Megan Wilson is Mitchum Huntsberger's son, Logan. Claire Wood is the mayor of Woodbury fighting with Taylor. Kelly Adams is Michelle adding complaints about guests to a list to show Lorelai. Hannah Peterson is Lane giving birth to two sons. What? <laughs> Anna Hernandez is Anna trying to keep Luke away from April. Whoa, fuck that. Jenna Gordonier is Andrew decorating the gazebo with gourds. I love Andrew, too. Sasha Smith is Zach talking about his new song and saying it sounds like the Smiths. Sarah is staring at Luke having a freakout at the town meeting. Vlyn and Drew are standing as drawings in the Living Arts Festival. Bridget Dubin is bidding on Lorelai's basket. Hillary Gay is Chad Michael Murray leaving the show for One Tree Hill. Elizabeth Doles is Taylor doling out free samples at the candy and soda shop. <laughs> Mackenzie Knight is dancing the night away at the dance marathon. And Rachel Evans is eventually going to move from Woodbury to Stars Hollow. It's a great decision. Make the move. And the rest of the beach bunches. Oh, uh, what are they? I feel like the rest of them are, oh you know, the little plums that are in one of Miss Patty's fucking, like, dances. Oh, my God, okay. You guys are the bulbs. <laughs> the kids throwing the glitter on the crowd. Yeah, <laughs> when they dance in the aisle. Yeah. All right, we got Allie Malone. Kathleen Wynn. And Rose Barnett. Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoy your time in Stars Hollow. Yes. Fantastic place. I wish I was there, man. You should watch Gilmore Girls if you haven't already. And if you have, we hope that was fun for you. Yes. But uh, we'll see you guys in our next one. Yeah, bye. Bye. That was a HeadGum Podcast.